This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 645 Tuesdays we've been celebrating professionalized wrestling. This is Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Jeez, these days wrestling, wrestling central it seems uh, from around here. And we got uh, a fun show lined up for tonight, bringing the energy and uh, maybe a couple people might be dropping in. At least one person might be dropping in here late show. But on with the line right now is the only Mayhemmer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Oh, yes. We're going to Yeah. Yeah, it's Mad Mike back for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Yeah, and I'm wearing my brand new Macho Man hoodie. Yeah. And I will not be talking like this all night so you don't have to worry about that. No, you don't. Not one little bit. But I needed to do it for the intro. Take it. Let him get it out of his system. Somebody hit the Cyber Monday deals. <laughs> <laughs> 17 bucks. <laughs> $17. It is a sweet hoodie, though. <laughs> it is a great hoodie, and it's very comfortable. Mm-hmm. And, like, for me, like, all right, and this is this is a side note about me and Mad Mike and Poughkeepsie <laughs> Weather. Um, it's cold <laughs> right now, but it's not. Like, upstate New I, York it, cold. Like, I, I don't know. Like, that, yeah, that is a very not, specific like, thing. Because I have a peacoat, but I sweat in the peacoat. Yes. So I'm like, this is perfect. It's good coverage. It's dynamic as shit because <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell. Purple, green, yellow. <laughs> and it also yeah. makes you safe while you're jogging at night. There you go. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me safe while I'm jogging at night. Oh, yeah. yes. Although I do have a Joker cane somewhere that I could probably... Never mind. No, let's let's move on from that. And also, (laughs) it's a different gimmick. Back with us. It's been over a year and a half since he's been on the show, and he's been getting around. It seems in the wrestling world. Nick Lendl is with us, announcer with Ring of Honor, amongst other places. Man, I I don't even. I'm not even going to attempt to beat that intro. No Macho Man or Dusty or. You can do Stu Hart. Yeah. It's my Stu Hart. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> yes. Holy crap. Yeah, you. I think we've since we've had you on, you debuted with Ring of Honor. You're pretty much a regular at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. Jeez. Um. Yeah. I'm not signed to a contract or anything, but yeah, I'm there. Uh, was just there for the Global Wars tour and um, I'm be in New York two weeks from now for Final Battle and the Philadelphia TV tapings the next day. So it's been it's been a, it's been a wild ride in the last year and a half since I've been here. That's awesome. A lot's happened, yeah. That's awesome. I want to talk about uh, uh, what's going on in Ring of Honor, of course, and uh, I know you're, you're probably privy to a lot of things going on there, and there's a lot of news these days about it and what's happening. And, uh, of course, a lot of, a lot of things happening locally. Uh, yeah. You had an interesting weekend I want to talk about with Rise Wrestling. But in the meantime, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We got a lot of stuff all over the wrestling world, and we're trying not to talk about things that make us angry like Monday Night Raw. So <laughs> I'm just going to put that line out there right now. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find uh, past episodes. Our other shows like uh, Indie Mayhem Show and uh, the, well, not the Raw wrap-up this week. I, we decided to do other things. And, and it was kind of a personal social experiment between me and Mad Mike to just see what life is like without Raw for you a week. You know what? They, don't, they didn't deserve our recap. <laughs> no, they did, not re- they did not deserve our recap or our vile on a late Monday night. Uh, but anyways. If you, if you, if you saw, right, for those of you who want a quick recap, if you saw last week's Raw and 164th of the Dark Knight Rises, you've seen this week's Raw. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, uh, but anyways, you can. <laughs> where was I at? I uh, subscribe to the show on all your podcast providers and video on YouTube and Facebook. Hit us up at that email address. Good times. Good times at wrestling. <laughs> Shut up. 
WMSC.com. <laughs> I mean, you said we weren't going to hear it the whole time. Four one two two zero six WMS zero. No, but he's going to slip like in I, and out I, of it. I, I realize yeah. really, I don't think I've I don't think I've ever done the good times as Macho Man, so I had to do it once. Yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, out of the system. at least we've said it. Also, has up four one two two zero six WMS zero. I believe our big question is from Tina on the hotline uh, this episode. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. I was really quiet last night. I know since I wasn't on there during Raw. Uh, Facebook page hit us up at the Wrestling Mayhem Show group where we have a lot of great discussion going on there, including peace offerings of uh, of uh, Girl Scout cookies. Um, so so Mad Mike. Hey, uh, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to address this. The, 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 okay. The, those weren't Girl Scout cookies. That was Girl Scout cookie cereal. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Ponder, you have been answered. Um, you can join us here Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook Live. Uh, we are, of course, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook. That's where the chat room is going to be, where we have a lot of people like Brandon and Alex and Tina and uh, Ty Cross is out there, too, of System Who the Elite. fuck is Ty that? Cross. I don't know, man. Uh, it's Who so the fuck many is Ty more. Cross? Uh, and so many more joining us. You can you can be part of the conversation or have Mike question your uh, existence like Ty Was Cross. Was he the guy that did Tybo back in the 90s? I think that's right. Um, but okay. anyway, <laughs> you can join us over on there. And of course, we're streaming on other platforms through the Sorgatron Media, Twitch, and Periscope as well. But if you're over on those, please hop over to the Facebook if you guys want to be heard during the show. Um, also... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm watching Mike eat out of the corner of my eye, and it's distracting. It looks delicious, Mike. Damn it! It is good. I made Listen, it myself. I get it. You got to multitask. You know, we got the. I'm sorry. Life. It's it's been a day. I'm <laughs> sure. I'm, I get it. I get. It. No, I completely understand. Yeah. I, I got to get through this intro. Uh, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Uh, our fans are, friends are supporting us at the fan of the show. One dollar level. Bo diggity. Woo. Woo. Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's foundation for podcast experiment. Our friends at the pocket club, five dollar level that um, get more macho man impressions this week, amongst other discussions. <laughs> uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley, heel Bradley, uh, Doc remedy and dave potter of the tiny shutter podcast and our friend at the pizza club ten dollar level that just gets more high fives and stuff too uh billy f and johnson you can support the show help us keep the lights on here if you get value out of the show we really entertained you a bit if you want to support some great talk about professional wrestling patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show so it's really actually um appropriate we have you here uh this week nick because like i said ring of honor is is Really high in the discussion this week about like a lot yeah, of the shakeups yeah. going on and everything. Um, was just um, I keep forgetting his name. The uh, 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 we're just talking about like the statement about like the the young bucks and them from uh, yeah, uh, um, Joe Coff. Joe Coff, the uh, yeah. the original owner CEO. of He's Ring of Honor, CEO right now, right now yes. with them, but still like a, a, still a, a big part of Ring of Honor. Oh know? yeah, absolutely yeah. Um, I, I get, it looks like. He's saying we're not seeing seeing Cody and the, the the Bucks and probably what Page in the in in 2019 it sounds like so which I mean there's been a lot of rumors going around right yeah so yeah, the rumors been flowing uh, I mean obviously I I don't know anything they're they're not gonna tell me no <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that's that's what it seems like uh, it seems like um, a lot of people think that they're gonna be on their way and uh, I yeah, they've earned that right to go and do what they want they've done so much for Ring of Honor this past year i think was the biggest year mm -hmm. um financially as you know as far as um money and sellouts and everything goes for the company and um you know I, it's like you don't want to say one way or the other because i don't know you know i don't know one way or the other but if the uh, coo of the company is saying in a <laughs> you know in a in an interview that's going to be spread out worldwide that he doesn't expect them to be there then that you know what else can you say i i think that whether they go or stay, obviously they're all great guys. Mm -hmm. um, definitely earned their spot to wrestle wherever they want in the world. So good luck to all of them. Um, it was Cody that got me on TV for the first time, Ring of Honor. Oh, that's right. So always have a special place I think for Cody. we had you on right after... It was before. No, it was before, it was before that. Yeah, it was before I did anything with Ring of Honor when because I was here last. Because you, you were the first to kiss the ring. Yes. Yep. And that's how that all started. I uh, It was actually supposed to be Bobby Cruz. <laughs> they were gonna they were gonna do and it and ended up coming to me but did you completely call in delaney that move then i well you know <laughs> they asked me 
Yes. They came to me and asked me, and I wasn't going to turn it down. That was my first time that I was on, I was on TV. Cody was awesome to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he's a really good guy. So what does the ring taste like? <laughs> like diamond. <laughs> <today. laughs> that seems rather appropriate. I like how I do the dusty and then the macho man thing too with it. Yeah, there was a hand motion for yeah, you guys on audio. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Got to explain the visuals. Okay. Explain the visuals. But it seems like, I, you know, of course, you know, there's a New Japan thing, and, and I'm, I'm sure they're still going to be a part of New J- Japan in some some factor. They seem to be a pretty oh, yeah, they strong have a thing there. Really good working relationship. Yeah. yeah a few times a year. But um, it, it seems like, you know, of course, the Madison Square Garden thing is still happening, a joint show yes. between them. So I think they're still going to pop, they're probably still going to pop up as part of like New Japan crossovers, I'd imagine. Just speculation. Well, it could be a third promotion crossing over. Or it could be a third. Everybody seems open these days. Um, and it really is a different landscape, isn't it? That we have like, oh, it is, like, yeah. like it, it is like a lot of people coming and going from Ring of Honor, working together. You know, I think it, didn't Ring of Honor and Impact do something recently together? Well, part of Jericho they worked together Cruise. on the Jericho Cruise. Yeah, uh, LAX wrestled the, the Bucks, I think. And the, uh, of course, you know, we, we talked a lot about Lucha Underground working with Impact, and you know, yeah, I mean, because Lu- I mean, last year's WrestleMania, Lucha and Impact did a show together. So, so you, this is kind of like the same, same, same thing as that, only with ROH and New Japan. That's the way. That's the way it should be. It, you know, it'd be yeah. great to see more companies work together. And get a, as many guys as possible to work together and see these matches cool. that all these fans want to see. Go ahead, yeah, and I, and I remember we even said something like this years ago, like like we had talked about, um, like who can really challenge WWE as the as the global juggernaut it is. Mm-hmm. And I I don't remember who it was. I, it might have been me, it might have been Bobby, it might have been Riz, it might have been all of us. Like just as a collective agreeing that if Impact and ROH pooled their stuff together. They could be as big as WWE. Mm-hmm. Well, they definitely, and, yeah, definitely have I the mean, talent to do so. I, I wonder if you, if you know, you know, obviously it's going to be the juggernaut. But if we did pull those all those numbers for everybody, I know Impact is reporting like lowest ever uh, numbers lately, and and then things like that. But with you know, but Ring of Honor, I mean, they between their eye pay per views and and the eyeballs they get on Sinclair. Uh, which is again broadcast as a different dynamic than what we see on 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 cable channels or third tier cable channels or or what or USA or whatever the case may be, um, and then you pull in like the bigger ones, um, you know, say a Chikara, say a uh, I don't know, nothing else is really hitting me right now. You know, what does that landscape look at of the alternative versus WWE? How many eyeballs are hitting those? You know, and you'll never get with indies and mm-hmm. stuff, right? Um, but you know, I, I think there's. Because it's strong out there. Like, I mean, you're seeing it at these indie shows, the same ones I'm going to, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's this vibe out there, and people, like, want this stuff, like, in a way that they haven't for a long time. Yeah, strongest vibe I've seen. I mean, I've only been around for a couple of years, but mm-hmm. it seems like since I started from now, it's just constantly on the rise. People are into it. The in- indies are on fire right now everywhere. And it doesn't seem like anybody's siloed in. Even WWE. I mean, how many people are just, like, stopping through NXT these days? Oh, yeah. Or, or NXT UK and, um, you know. I mean. There are NXT wrestlers who are champions in progress now. Progress mm-hmm. and evolve, evolve. right? Uh, evolve, evolve. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but I think progress are also similarly working. I don't think I don't think there's any champions, but I know no. there's champions that evolve, like Street Profits and Fabian Eichner are both champions that evolve. Yeah, so. which may, which is great because those are guys that I think have a lot of potential, but there's maybe just not a spot on NXT yet. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, like Fabian's been a really good worker. You know, and that's where they can kind of blow up as something like evolve yeah you know? and, and street profits have been like third tier tag team on a show that doesn't have a lot of tag teams so you know if they, if they can hone their craft and get better and come back on nxt mm-hmm. that's all the better for them um a brand is bringing up and, and, and we didn't allude to this just yet but uh uh he says remember that new promotion he was telling us about like there's been some rumors going on about um um Rose in the Bucks potentially starting a new promotion with uh, the owner of the Jaguars, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And there was a story about uh, Rose was seen sitting in the VIP box of the Jaguars mm-hmm. at the game on Sunday. So that is kind of lending to it. Also, yeah, we were talking about like some of the things that the Bucks do. With, if there's a rumor, they're going to lean into it, right? Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, they, they bring up honor shows or something. They're probably playing up the, you know, hey, maybe we're, we're out of here, guys, um, thing. And, um, uh, you know, the, the they know they're going to poke at people with doing something like that. You have to. Mm-hmm. You got to keep the buzz going. You're not going to say, 
you know, there's still how much time until our contracts are up, but this is what we're doing. You got to keep the suspense up. Mm -hmm. And they did pull off all in, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, I mean, it it makes sense that somebody could be like, hey, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys did this on your own relatively. I mean, I, I think Ring of Honor pitched in for sure, but... Mostly, it's it's them on their own, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, again, it was everybody working together. It was Impact, ROH, saying, you know, yes. kind of more kind of promotional buzz out of it for being part of it, right? I think it's so, seemed, yeah. You know, <laughs> because it, it, it was like, like you're yeah. watching it. It was, it was like everybody came on All In to promote their shows. Mm-hmm. As in All In, like, because All In was the WrestleMania of the Indies. Absolutely, yeah. And, and which was a really cool thing to see, you know. Um, just like Don Castle hanging out and just talking about ring of honor on commentary was really cool mm-hmm. you know even though it was not a ring of honor show per se so um and hopefully the new new promotion will be something similar to that and, and again it's just the silos are broken down some of the rumors well rumors of these are, are these confirmed pco to ring of honor uh, this is that's what i've heard <laughs> um like i said i haven't been uh we haven't you know had a show this month yet so i haven't talk to anybody since the news has broken but it seems to be confirmed uh i'm looking forward to forward to working with him he's made some waves and i learned about somebody was tweeting about i can't wait to see pco win the uh top prospects tournament (laughs) (laughs) well that's like it's funny like i do um i do future of honor um yeah ring announce for the future of honor matches and the one um match we did at the hammerstein ballroom was off a junior who was in wwe uh, as part of the legacy was manu for a little bit, oh, he had yeah. like a very brief run in WWE's off of, so, off a of junior. Something popped up about that. I don't know if I was I listened to Pritchard or something. Yeah. I, was like, I was just thinking, like, what happened to Manu? So uh, he, yeah, he's still he he's didn't still catch the Undertaker. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's what happened. It was uh, Manu and um, J Rock, and it was wow. a Future of Honor match. It's like yeah, Manu's been around for 15, 16 years. He's been in WWE. J Rock's been around for twenty years, and this is the fu- this is Future of Honor. The, you know, sometimes it takes you twenty years to get so, that stuff. So you <laughs> know, but yeah, PCO man, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I was a little kid when he was last relevant, I guess. You uh, know? Yeah, well, well the, for those who don't know uh, the uh, Quebecers, he was the one with the eye patch. They were yeah. WWF tag team champions in like 1994. And then he, and, and then he was the uh, parrot, and he had a, so, a little solo run. He ended up wrestling Bret Hart on a in your house in '95. And wow, that was kind of it. He popped up in WCW for a little bit, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, for a while it was just you know out of the business or whatever, and it just. Boom, you know, you think Janella had him on a show. And now he's Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, he's not it works not, for not him. human. He's it works <laughs> for him. I think that, you know, he's on Black Blackcraft here in uh Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. uh the inaugural Blackcraft wrestling show. I don't think they've had a second one yet. There's one this month, I think. Yeah. Uh, up in Buffalo. And uh it, and uh, so it's it's kind of interesting to see that that come around. Like it just it's such a like only Weird in thing. wrestling Weird that thing. like that's why I uh I tweeted out a couple months ago that I said you know, if five years ago, if someone would have told me in five years, there will be no Undertaker WrestleMania streak. AJ Styles will be the WWE champion. Mm-hmm. Kane's the mayor. Uh, <laughs> the hottest talent uh, up and coming on the indies is Pierre from the Quebecers. Like I had a couple other things on there, but it's like, man, you know, if someone would have told me that five years ago. I would have bet my house against oh, yeah. some of those, you know, um, Ricochet was in a war games match. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Jeez, Ray Rowe was in a. War I was gonna. Games I was just gonna say, Jeez. yeah, War Machine. Yeah. Half that. Uh, half that match was Ring of Honor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, more well, than half that match. Yeah, just, uh, was yeah. IWC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to go that far too, yeah, we'll take that. That works. One of them still owes my my Mad Mike a uh, title shot. Yep, Ray Rowe. Ooh. still looking at you. I'm looking for you, Ray Rowe. As soon as you get those NXT tag titles, I'm coming for you. Take it. Sorry. <laughs> With my seventeen dollar oh, hoodie. With my seventeen. Uh, it's, I'm being possessed. Um, the partners in the chat room says, uh, "Also, will anyone be left for villains of New Year's party?" <laughs> hey, you know. Um, I hear Joey Ryan rises from time to time. Oh, so. <laughs> I heard. I heard uh, that he's in the Christmas. I think he's in the Christmas commercial for Impact or something. Oh, he was, he was sharing that around today. <laughs> of course he is. said best Christmas wow. best Christmas commercial ever. Um, and was, we were talking about that before. It sounds like 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 it, it doesn't sound like Marty Skrull might be going anywhere. I don't know. The rumor mill was the rumor mill, right? So, but, I, but either way. Basically, the, the 20, 25 
through 29 of the Royal Rumble is just going to be the Bullet Club. <laughs> <laughs> and then number 30, Archer. You Archer. know, the way things are going, I, I wouldn't put that past them. Yeah. To like just be like, hey, come in for just this. Right? Y- you know, yeah. You I, know, that's exactly. They could do anything. You want to talk about, uh, you know, getting the Internet going. They could sign, you know, their contracts end at the end of the year or whatever. They could show up at the Rumble, do an appearance in the Rumble, make yeah. everyone think they signed. And then the next week show up somewhere else and just have that one match deal and, you know, fool everybody. It's, you know, it's been done. It can. Like the next day announce their new promotion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That may also be cover, cover, you know, may also be uh, on the WWE Network for all we know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, cross promote. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it just seems like that's where we're at. I mean, it, 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 I'm still, I'm still blown away at the the Kevin Owens documentary that was basically a retelling of his Ring of Honor storylines. Yeah, with full footage. Yeah, that was awesome. That was some, it was like it was the Ring of Honor DVD I never knew that that I always wanted. Yeah, that WWE produced. <laughs> Yeah, but, lots of footage on uh, there. Yeah, it's another thing you can add to your list, you know, on top of it. Or that they, we we have like both Ring of Honor and Impact Wrestling footage mm-hmm. regularly appearing on the There's WWE Network. Next year, Shit. I'm sorry. What? 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 What's that, Mike? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just kind of sweep that under the rug. Um, <laughs> but it, you know, I don't. It's a big. I don't want to call it a big loss for Ring of Honor. I mean, it's going to be a big void, right? Oh, I, I mean, you can't say it's not. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, it seems like um, Ring of Honor is definitely has, you know, interesting people are coming in. They're always, they're always, you know, there's always pe- people getting cast, cast off and signed to uh, NXT and uh, whatnot. Oh, of course. So, I mean, and this that, is nothing new. Yeah, and that's and it's not going to stop either. No. But the, the no. one thing about Ring of Honor is you look at 2018, 2016, 2002, Ring of Honor has always had the best mm-hmm. talent, mm-hmm. you know, and if someone leaves for WWE or Impact or wherever they go, they always seem to refresh, you know, keep the... Um, I have yet to be disappointed by a Ring of Honor show I've attended. Absolutely, because there, there are so many guys that have gone where you think when this guy leaves, like, okay, that's the nail in the coffin. Like, I remember in the um, 90s, they thought that mm-hmm. when Brett left WWE, that was the nail in the coffin. They already lost Hogan. They lost... Nash, Hall, all these guys, but when Brett left, that was the nail in the coffin. And then they ended up having, you know, their best years after that. Whereas yeah. now, um, you saw it whenever whenever Kevin Owens or, you know, Kevin Steen left Ring of Honor and it was like, oh man, you know, uh all those guys when they when they left, you think AJ, uh Adam Cole, you know, there's countless names that it just keeps going, you know, and I feel like obviously the Bullet Club, Cody, Young Bucks, um, the whole package and individually are the most popular group in the history of the company, probably. I mean, yeah. I, I'm in the ring, I'm watching on TV, and no matter where you look, there's Bullet Club shirts everywhere. Even on WWE, you know, I've, I've done this. <laughs> even little, on Edge and Christian show. I was going to say, apparently. even on the Edge and Christian show, there's Bullet Club shirts. But, but I'm saying I've done this, and, uh, you know, you can, any WWE programming, at any time, you can pause the footage and find a bullet club shirt in the crowd from it, any any angle it's the new nwo exactly like, exactly it, like fully and um more for life i think in the, I, the nwo was i'm still shocked every time i go into a hot topic oh that's and, unbelievable and see, yeah and i see more new japan stuff unbelievable than WWE. Yeah. like yeah. i can get a los and gobernale shirt mm-hmm. i can get like just anything every single jericho shirt that came out yeah was that hot topic yeah an SCU shirt, like I still kind of want to get. This is the worst time I've ever been in because I'm in Poughkeepsie, and you know, <laughs> it fits. But yeah, you know, like, it's insane how much. Like there, there are maybe, there are maybe four varieties of WWE shirts at a given time. Mm-hmm. There's, there's at least eight. New and new usually shirts. throwback stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, no, we get new uh, stuff. It is new. new st- it is newer uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, we get new stuff. Uh, we got Larry rolling in here. He'll join us, um, and, and maybe we'll get his uh, his opinion on Ring of Honor. Have you have you kept up on any Ring of Honor lately? No, you you've been. Oh, you've never least, seen least Ring of Honor. You, at least lie. So you've never seen Nick Lendl? At least do. Lie. I've seen you kiss Cody's ring. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that I've seen you kiss Cody's yeah. ring. He okay. says. Saw I it. saw the important stuff. So <laughs> That's good. All right, give me a second. I'll get Not a really get good. a camera on Larry here. Uh, <laughs> 
I'm going. You know, I'm going. You know, at least we can keep you humble, Nick, by by pairing you on the show with people that don't watch the product that you're on every week. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> well, Nick, if fine. it makes you feel better, if Ring of Honor was on my television, I'd watch it. Okay. So you should just yeah. say that. I currently, I currently watch, <laughs> I'm not I currently watch way too much wrestling <laughs> on a computer monitor, so I don't want to watch wrestling on a computer monitor that I don't have to. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> this is a weird discussion we've had. He's just like, he's like, I need something on my television, you know, like it's 2001, and it doesn't yeah. happen here. It's just, yeah, because that's one of the problems with being a regional uh, station carried promotion, you know, so. I've told I've told him about yeah, Fight TV. I, I've told him about Ring of yeah. Honor, Ringside, and all that uh, stuff. Get on, yeah, Honor Club. Honor Club. Get on Honor Club, Mike. You know what, Mike? You, 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 maybe maybe Patreoners. Maybe you'll help me with this. <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get Mike a, a, a Honor Club subscription there for 2019 for for Christmas. We're pitch in. Yes. Go fund me. Go fund me for you for I mean, an Honor Club excru- Go fund subscription. Mike. Go fund Mike. That's Stand, our new standard stuff. member, go, not VIP. Go, no, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> I don't not, even know. The, I, I don't know what the levels are, but what gets the sweet discount? Standard discounts? VIP. Just standard of VIP. <laughs> yeah. The standards. Okay. Standards like the I can watch the TV show. And standard is. Uh, come on, give me the pitch. The give st- me the pitch, man. <laughs> Log on now and join Honor Club. Is it nine ninety nine? Yes, it is nine ninety nine. It's uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, standard uh, members get fifty percent off all the pay per views, and you get to stream all the live events for free. And then VIP members get all the pay per views for free. Mm-hmm. So it, it does pay for itself. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. So you can watch Final Battle for free. All the everything that's happened the last month, the last couple months, you can catch up. There Get you go, familiar Larry. if you've never watched. You know, it's re- it's really very <laughs> New Japan adjacent. So you'd fit right in. Larry. It is okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I have New Japan World. Yeah, oh, I don't. Well, I, don't I don't have Ring of Honor. So yeah. you get some Ring of you, because they have the Ring of Honor show, like the crossover shows yeah. on there and everything. Yeah. So I dropped my WWE Network subscription well, for okay. New Japan World. Oh, so no, now I not a problem. I might be dropping Netflix anyways, so. Oh, really? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're getting rid of Daredevil, man. Oh, man. Right, you can't do that. Fair. I can give you like five but, other shows but, that are better than Daredevil but, but right you still now. Got, you still got Punisher next season coming out. My point is, is I can use the money for the w, from the Netflix for Ring of Honor. There you go. You okay, know, so. Or we, he get, I can, I'm going to help him plug his, his own uh, business no, properly go. at the end of the show. Then he can afford all of the networks. All of the networks as one. I'm probably gonna have to get DC Network. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And we're gonna have to go get I, Disney for the I've, Marvel. And... I've been hearing okay things about Titans. And I'm mm. like, damn it. Yeah, I hear it's a little better than we all expected. And and, and young justice, young justice in January. We're getting oh, off track. Oh boy, yeah. this is I, another podcast. But anyways, yeah. I want to talk about where the hell we is should it? do a podcast called "Should We Stream It?" Sorg. <laughs> should I stream that? I have to talk. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah, we we really should do. That. We, we probably should. We, we, let's be honest. <laughs> should I stream that? Um, I want to talk about cats, uh, Lucha Underground's future, and uh, where the hell is Neville these days after this? Are you first saying of- that there is a cat god in Lucha Underground? Oh man, and I wish. Vo- and it's voiced by Neville because yes. <laughs> Wasn't that what Prince Puma was? No, no, no. I Prince c- Puma's I helping the orphans with El Generica. He was kind of a cat god. He was wasn't kind he? of a cat god. Yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, him and Linsari Dorado. There you go. Yeah. All right, guys. In the meantime, please go check out uh, network. A lot of great um, content going on there, including Breakfast with Champions with our friends Jack Pollock and uh, David Lawless and uh, and uh, Matt Connard. Uh, three. Well, I, I, I guess I guess Lawless lost his belt at KSWA this past weekend. So, oh, did he? Yeah, to uh, Dennis Gregory. Oh. So I, we'll, we'll have to find out what cereal Denny likes. Uh, but that is Sorg, there. Sorg, do you want to know what cereal Denny likes? What, what kind of What's that? Thought of shavings he finds on the floor because he's a bum. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love. Okay, I like that you did that, but it doesn't have as much conviction as when Chad the Shad does it. Well, I know. Because you're I'm, a I'm bum. Also- I'm also over Skype, so I can't go too aggressive. Right, it, begins, it, it, it peaks out. It peaks out and will lose you. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You can't give the full on bumness. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, I'll look and see if the title belt's on his bed in uh, Central Park. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> We did find his bed in Central Park one time. Uh, you can find out great programs like that or uh, Shirley Doe and Duke Davis uh, 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 giving hardcore memories. Um, that 
almost sounded like a different sentence. Uh, Rise Wrestling, which is going to feature uh, <laughs> Nick here in a couple of weeks. Uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, new episode will be going up uh, this week. As soon as I edit it, to be honest, uh, with uh, fantastic uh, 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 action in there, including uh, Brohemoth getting hit by a Christmas tree by Beastman. That's a thing I can say. A caveman hit a video game guy with a Christmas tree. It's going to be my favorite gif ever. More calling birds. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I mean, that's how I get in the mood The mood for the holidays is whenever, um, you know, um, conifers are used in violent ways. Uh, anyways, uh, our friends Shirley Doe and Duke Davis have also issued a challenge. If we get 200 network subscribers, we are going to attempt to book Kimona, one Alea from ECW on Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories. And uh, she will dance atop the Mayhem Studios. I still have to ask my landlords about roof access to this building uh, so we can he do that. He will dance adjacent to the Mayhem Adjacent, studio. well, in front of the Presbyterian Church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> only, and, of course, uh, Duke and Doe's Hardcore Memories, only available on the Indie Wrestling Network. You can start your f- seven-day free trial over there, www.indywrestling.network, only five ninety nine a month, and uh, new content being added all, t- all the time, including including Premier Championship Wrestling, including uh, that has Nick on it as well. Um, geez, the list Uprise is going to be an exclusive uh, place where you can see uh, recorded episodes of uh, shows from Uprise as well as Prospect Pro Wrestling debuting next week. Anyways, <laughs> so Tina, Tina shared um, something that caught my attention here. Um, uh, Neville is everywhere, guys. Well, Pac, I guess. He's back to the old name. Um, because WWE and stuff. And he is going to... Because be- that is literally all he's made out of these days. It's Pac? He is 13 Pac. 13 Pac. Se- have you seen those pictures? He is... He is... Jesus Christ. Definitely not on the wellness policy or has a <laughs> lot of time to hit the gym. Jeez. I think it, I think it's the latter. Uh... Because he got paid for a long time to do a lot of nothing. It's true too, uh, but anyways, yeah, he is going to be taking on uh, Will Osprey at your call at Rev Pro, um, and plus, I think he just won a championship, didn't he? Uh, that I don't know. Something I think like he that. did. Uh, Dragon Gate. Dragon Gate. That, I think that sounds right. Yeah, Where Dragon Gate champion. Is Dragon Gate still an evolved thing? I don't. Th- I don't think so. No. If they if they no. are, I snooze them. They they separated or something. They were they were under like the WWN stuff for a while. They kind of merged ish, I thought. Or maybe we're talking like Dragon, Dragon Gate Japan. Maybe. Um, that's another guy that's just ripping it up after he left WWE. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Like we were talking a bit before the show about yeah. like Cody and all the stuff he's done. Um, Sorg, Sorg, a very wise man once said, "The cream will rise to the top." Oh, jeez. Here we go. And then sometimes you're Enzo and Big Cass. Oh. And then sometimes you're sneaking into the Survivor Series. Hashtag Big Casserole. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can't Ugh. teach that. <laughs> yeah, that happened, too. Yep. He's, he's now seven feet tall and seven feet wide. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. We can't. I'm joking. I'm joking. We can't I fat can. shame on this show. No, but he's an asshole, so we can asshole shame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that we can do. No, no, that 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 is allowed. That is definitely yeah, allowed. Yeah, no, he's an asshole, so we can take cheap shots. I don't fat shame good people. I don't fat shame. Anything. I'm glad you have like <laughs> standards, like a, a code of ethics here. So While yeah, questionable, who, you at least have one. Who doesn't? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That man has a code of ethics. Same thing. <laughs> he doesn't use guns, but he will break every bone in your body. It seems questionable. But as long as you stick to it, eh. I won't. I think it was at the beginning of the justice. Like, well, you won't break, you won't kill anybody, but you'll give them a, um, a lifetime um, um, brain damage. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, all right. He's living. He's as, technically alive. As a potato. Like Raw is technically a wrestling show. <laughs> Mike, I don't want to make you sad. No, it's okay. But no, I'm good. Uh, our, our good friend, friend of the show, uh, Eric Van Wagenen, was doing some interviews on some other podcast. Uh, and, what? Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, that was, the part, that was the part I was worried about. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, one of the many ones that they also mentioned on their show. Um, they were talking about season five. Now, season five has not been confirmed or denied. I, that's why I was hoping John Morrison would, uh, Johnny Mundo would win the Survivor. 
Because if he won that million dollars, he could just fucking bankroll Lucha forever. Oh, he could bankroll. He could bankroll Lucha and and he could bankroll thirteen Boon sequels. Oh, that'd be amazing! <laughs> and all the Boon right? spinoffs. Yep. They'd have sharks with torn- sh- Sharknadoes in the Boon spinoffs. Oh yeah, that like Taya Taya Boons. <laughs> yeah, um, Taya Boons. <laughs> I want to subscribe to your newsletter, Sork. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, no, uh, definitely. Uh, but but they talked about how you know they're basically as low as they could go on the budget. Um, it, it sounds like El Rey and, and MGM are very happy with the program. Uh, but in order for them to go forward, they're going to have to basically reboot most of the series, uh, which makes sense because a lot of those people have moved on. Between signings and, and, and they killed off a lot of, they people. did murder a lot they of people murdered. on the show this year. But they gave themselves that whole time traveling loophole or to get out of it, you know. So yes. they can reboot it and still have it make sense, like X Men. You can pretend that whole X Men three never happened. So which season is going to be X Men three of uh, Lucha Underground? Oh God, I don't know if that can happen. I don't think there can be a lucha that bad. No, no, I don't, I don't think there was. <laughs> no. I don't think there was. No, no, there can be lucha that bad. It's called Impact Wrestling. Ah, oh, Mike, come on. <laughs> Half the guys are there. It, it is. It is. Um, I, I love how conflicted you are because all of your favorite lucha people are in Impact Wrestling, <laughs> which you abhor. Mm-hmm. So, to be fair, they blocked me first. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Wait, you got blocked by Impact? Oh, you yeah. haven't been here for this discussion? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm blocked by an actual wrestling company. Yeah, yeah. All, an entire wrestling company <laughs> an has entire blocked wrestling him. company. And like, <laughs> when Ty retweets stuff, I can't see what the fuck it is. And, wow. and several members of their staff, I believe. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Hulk Hogan. Wait, and wait. Hogan. Wait, is it? <laughs> and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> There will be no mega powers reuniting on Twitter. Dig it. Actually, aren't you blocked by by staff members that now work at WWE? Um, does Hulk Hogan count? Because they just <laughs> released new merch of him. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Bor- Borash because he's officially. Oh yeah. There. Uh, yeah. I, oh, yeah, I think I might be banned by Borash. Too. <laughs> That's the thing that bugs me. So Borash is such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll drop him an email. Good times. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Wrestling There we go. Kidding. Thank you I'm for for kidding. bringing the loop around. Uh, but anyways, Lucha Underground. We'll see what happens uh, with them here coming up. Um, as long as we get Wade Barrett, seriously, I don't I don't care if they have to reboot the whole fucking thing. Can I just get a, like a like a, like have him have him bullhammer the timeline? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like even if we like, just get like a loop. he just grabs the gauntlet. Looks at the clock of infinity and said, "I'm afraid I've got some bad news." And just boom. We've always kind of uh, held out hope that maybe Netflix would just bankroll them coming to Netflix too. Well, they'll have oh, some uh, spaces <laughs> open up. Some open Disney's purging it. Yeah, it is. It is. And and just because um, there was a, one podcast I was listening to about like if you do a Netflix original show, like there is a tech spec for how you need to shoot the show. Like in four, like be 4K ready and everything, I can't wait for like 4K Lucha because <laughs> oh. I, I don't know what they're using oh, now. Oh, that but... just makes my brain happy. <laughs> but uh, if it, 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 it's such a weird mix because it's like low budget telenoir, but it'll be in like 8K, right on your Netflix. <laughs> so like I don't know if that makes it look better or worse in the long run, right? For like you know, because you know when you get you're at that you're at that level, like you cut corners. And and when you can see all the details, like, will you see the paper mache? I don't know. You're kind of the expert on this, Larry. Paper mache? I don't, whatever you make stuff out of. I've never paper mache in my I life, I don't know. Sir. You've done set work. Well, yeah. I guess that's true. And, you know, you fake things. I mean, if you look at, if you just look at the trash cans now on Lucha Underground, you can tell. That is true. <laughs> how, how they're made. Like, and you'll know even more in that uh, that 4K TV you got on Black Friday. Yeah, and I and I see I see mm. that on my little box TV that's right here. Like <laughs> that is right. I, I I don't think we we talked about this like after a raw wrap up. I, you know, Mike is watching a lot of wrestling. And remember when he was saying how he needs to watch wrestling on his television and not a computer monitor? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mike, what's your TV again? Um, it's it is uh this 
It's a tube. <laughs> That's it's definitely a, big, a tube. Oh, man. It's a tiny old tube TV. I mean, tiny. It's a nice 25 inches, right? 4K. It's a good size. I mean, it's a good size, on, Mike. Maybe on a good day, sort. <laughs> <laughs> maybe when it's not cold. Um. Anyways. <laughs> definitely not while wearing a hoodie. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeez. Speaking of resurrections. Um... <laughs> Well played. Well played. <laughs> I don't want to become the XFL podcast. Um, oh, we're not going to. We're not going to, but I mean, we kind of <laughs> have to at least mention it from time no, to time. No, we don't. No. I, no? no, we don't because, no. no, because it is explicitly not going to be associated with wrestling this time. Listen, listen. This... The Rock is not going to introduce a game. He might. Jim Ross is not going to be a commentator. He might. <laughs> I've had You're holding out for it? XFL. His contract's expired. Never know. And... You never know. Is it, is it your next step after know. Ring of Honor? You're like, hey, come on, XFL. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can do both. I mean. Yeah, I guess I, I can get through football. Yeah. <laughs> is it football? Well, I mean, we haven't seen it yet. We haven't the, seen this iteration yeah. yet. So, Do you want to know the only way the XFL will succeed? Do you want to know the only way? Hmm. And that, this, is, this, is, this is me. This, if the first player they sign is Colin Kaepernick. Whoa! I that's that's the only re that's the only way it will succeed. Oh, I don't want to go down that road, but um. No, no, I'm serious. That's the and Colin it ain't gonna Kaepernick. happen. It ain't gonna fucking happen at all because on Raw and SmackDown we have heels who believe in climate change and vaccinations, so it ain't gonna fucking happen. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Hashtag political mayhem show. Yes, yes. No, we need, we need to bring that show up too. Um, so this is, so I don't know, this is a graphic, so it must be for real. Um, I don't know what the source is for this and, and please anybody, cause I know you guys have been talking about it in the group in the chat room, uh, here. I know, I know Tina, you're excited about this too. Eight XFL cities, um, are supposedly announced or informed yes. or rumored. Uh, those are all, those, I, th those are all correct. These are all correct. So we're talking so Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, yep. St. Louis, Seattle, Tampa Bay, and Washington D.C. all yep. getting XFL teams. Um, yeah. and was this? And, and Alex Tim Tebow is not going to sign with the XFL because he's going to sign with the Mets. Tim Tebow? <laughs> yeah, he's been playing uh, minor league baseball with the Mets. Oh, I forgot he was Bo Jacksoning it. Eh. Technically, he's more, Michael Jordan. More like it. no Jacksoning in it, but okay. Mm, wasn't think, he also? Wasn't is he also Fo, or Fo Jackson? He's Fo Jackson. He's also announcing on NFL, isn't he? Uh, college, I think. College? I, I thought I saw him on Thanksgiving Day, but I don't know. It's There's college that's played on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, okay. I don't know what my family watches, but <laughs> one non-NFL city out of this is the big thing, which is St. Louis? Because their football failed there and had to go to L.A. Yeah, they, oh. they just went to L.A. The Rams went to L.A. It, it seems like an interesting play, um, but... It doesn't seem like it really profitable football city well i mean the, <laughs> the facilities there and it's not really being used except for concerts so you yeah. might as well yeah oh, there's well, whatever to say the, the like a couple more taking pictures putting pictures up of some of the stadiums that were being used um metlife stadium will hold an xfl team what yeah is one of them yeah why wouldn't it I was I just you know surprised where, where else is, where else is new york gonna have a, a football team of course in new jersey um, yeah. and one of them looked like sort of a rugby field, uh, in Washington, DC when the one that they, they pulled up there. So, uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, it, you know, I, I, I'm curious what's going to happen because like so much of it was, we want the fans to tell us what's happening. So is it you arena know? football? No, like, I'm not really no. sure what the XFL no. is. All right. In theory, no. the XFL oh, is you know what I mean? Like it was like working football before yeah. right yeah it was it was yeah. but was full is it like, field oh, it football is. okay it, in theory the xfl is going to be like full football but it's now also going to have like fantasy leagues like like DraftKings and stuff like that where you can actually bet real money on it and stuff like that uh less penalties a bunch of stuff that they're talking about they're trying to make it a more watchable football game no they're trying to make it a more violent football game oh, yeah there's that too i go um, hand in hand they're trying. They're trying to bring football back to the roots. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the XFL doesn't have helmets. I would no. be shocked if they didn't have helmets. Oh, I wouldn't be that. surprised after all the concussion crap yeah. you went through with WWE. No, because 
No, because there is actually a running theory in the NFL that if you take away helmets, people will not lead with their heads. Wow. Can we get the leather helmets from like the? Yeah, yeah, the you could do that too. But like, like I've I've heard that like because I listen to a lot of ESPN and stuff like that. There have been people who have said if you take away the helmets, no one's going to lead with their head. Could take away now, a good point. Now, yeah, granted, very good point. that doesn't that, that doesn't solve all the problems. No, 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 no. You're also going on the assumption the that football players have common sense. Um, mm. it would hurt a lot more if they led with their head and they're not wearing a helmet. The first time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's <laughs> move on from that to, um, wow. first of all. Um, raw! Let's talk let's about talk about Raw, raw really? Anything. You want to go from Raw to that? I want to I wanna point out, Jordan. <laughs> I want to go from anything to that. If you're not following Jordan Grace, who uh, recently debuted on Impact Wrestling, and I'm loving what I'm seeing from that. Oh, man. Jeez, I, I, I'm sad she didn't make the one IWC show. I know it was like a personal uh, issue that came up, but um, but it would see her, you know, before she's blown up everywhere. <laughs> so, for instance, you what, she was at Ring of Honor a few times, uh, probably when you're I was around, gonna right? Say, um, she's uh, dating Jonathan Gresham. Yeah, yeah, and she was on All In. I met her uh, in a hotel room in a bed by herself by accident because I was <laughs> what? Well. <laughs> This Go is uh, on. It's, not, it's not a good story, and my wife's sitting right here, so you yeah. know it's not. And you know, so you know it's not a good story. But uh, um, yeah, I was rooming with uh, Jonathan Gresham for a Super Card of Honor yeah. in uh, New Orleans this past year, and I had never met Jordan, um, mm-hmm. and um, so I was going up to the room, and Gresham was out, I guess. So I opened the <laughs> the room, and I walk in, and there's just this girl laying in bed watching TV. And I'm just like, oh, hey, <laughs> that's how I met her. And then, like, yeah, I, I didn't put all two, right, two all right. together. Wait, I was wait, like, wait. am I in the big right Big question, room? big question. What was she watching? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> don't remember. Damn but it, I, this was your moment. I'm like, man, am, am I in the right place? Am I in the wrong room? And then um, a couple minutes later, Gresham walked in and everything was cool. But that was kind of awkward because she didn't know me. I didn't know her. I just kind of, like, walked in the room. And I was like, you know, hey, because I, I – you know, I'm sure Gresham wasn't Jordan. like, "Hey, there's gonna be a guy coming in here that's rooming with me." So, but it was uh, that was interesting. But she's a cool girl, very awesome. nice girl. <laughs> was that Mike? No, I was gonna say, if you're walking into a room that you expect to be empty, and you find a woman on a bed, you're not going to notice what's on the television. Okay, okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, you're you're just going to be like, "Oh, d- is this is this a prank show? Did I just get punked?" <laughs> Well, anyways, I don't know. Maybe it looked like she was getting punked in the UK because she's like, let's talk about this locker room. By the way, follow her on Twitter. She has some amazing stuff, including the creepy things that she gets um, messaged and DM'd. Uh, she shares publicly. I think she was working on a book at one point, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. A book of like of, of creepy, creepy promoters messages <laughs> that she got from over the yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Which is a big issue with, with the women's wrestlers. Like, oh, yeah. A lot of men's wrestlers, it, too. It's I a think. big issue with women. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is why we need it's to work everywhere. on our representation on this show. <laughs> I've been I've, I'm just having a big discussion with someone the other day about that. Um, but anyways, uh, but she, she she shared this locker room um, that is th- th- they basically got the change in a discotheque. It looked like I'm not co- I'm not convinced that wasn't Glenn Gilberti's house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it does look like the uh, Disco Inferno residence oh, wow. a little bit there or like like if disco inferno was in lucha underground that would be his temple i've <laughs> never seen so many disco balls in one small place um and and it's got like multiple multicolored light up uh, uh panels on the floor yeah, it, it looks l- fun it looks like a full room ddr setup yeah wow <laughs> but that's amazing so where did they have the match <laughs> that that was the spare room i'd put it right there in a room, I mean, in a room. that might I mean, that might just be a backdrop that might, that might too. Yeah, she's well, I'm really just good. looking at the photo. I'm just looking at the photo next to it, and it looks kind of like framed out. It looks but like it's just green like screen a, there. Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't push on, press on the full screen. Maybe there's more to it that we don't know. Oh yeah, you see, what it's kind of like saying, framed yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. but that, that might be just Twitter doing it. Anyways, I'm sorry. I just got a kick out of that one, um, especially um, after seeing locker rooms this weekend, and it's like that's just completely different. Um, but no, go follow her. Uh, a lot of fun on there. Uh, so with that, hey, I want to give a shout out to our good friends, um, feeding, feeding people that are stopping in these nights, you know, get the energy going. 
uh, here uh, on the show. Our good friends at Slay Salon Broadway right up the street um, um, in here in Beachview. And, of course, four locations in the Pittsburgh area. If you guys are in town, I know a lot of you guys uh, stop in or out of town. Uh, over in Carnegie, PA, on the way to the airport, West End and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, that don't have much of a postseason. But anyways, uh, <laughs> go check them out. And like I said, any. if uh, any, if uh, you have a Broadway in your town, I'd like you to tweet them the Broadway from your town, wherever that may be, and let them know, hey, we have a Broadway. We'd like a slice on our Broadway. PGH I- underscore, twi- uh, underscore slice on the Twitter. Mike, Mike, you should take a picture of the Broadway. Uh, I, I will say this. I, I can get many A slice on my Broadway, but none of them are as good as Slice on Broadway. Wow. That was good. Wow. Dude, you, it makes you think. you think. Makes you think. Thank you. <laughs> that was a little word problem. Go check it out, SliceOnBroadway.com. I'll be here all week. I'll be here all week. <laughs> Try the veal. We'll be back. After this message and a fan submitted big question. Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It is a Wrestling Mayhem show. We are back here. We are reminiscing about WrestleMania, the album off air here today. So good. And we may have all sang at least the beginning of the Big Boss Man theme. Um, so that's what you miss off of the Facebook feed because I didn't hit record for the gold for that one, unfortunately. But, uh, anyways, it is time for the big question and it was submitted this week. Um, you can submit it on the hotline that I've said already way too many times at the beginning of the show. Like Tina Keys from up around Seattle joined us. And for visuals, if you're on with us on the video version, uh, I'm going to hit play and then I'm going to switch over to Mike and he's going to, um, bad Japanese mouth, uh, Tina's. Tina's voicemail. So uh, let's go see what she had to say. Hi, Mayhemers. This is Tina. I actually have a question for you. Um, with the recent downtrend of Raw, it got me thinking, um, especially with some of the roster on there. They used to be from previous brands. What WWE superstar from out of all the three brands you think would thrive in their former brands as of now. Uh, for example, one of mine would be Finn Balor going back to New Japan. Tell me what you think. I gotta be honest. I was paying so much attention to him, but I didn't process the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he went in fast forward. <laughs> she, said, she said which WWE oh. superstars would do better going back to where they were before they were in WWE. So she said in the sample she gave, Mike, since you, you're the one that couldn't hear this, was like Finn Balor going back to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, oh God. Who would, go, who would do better going back to their roots? Yes. Everyone. Everyone I'm raw. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if, 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 if uh, Tyler Black ever resurfaced in Ring of Honor, I mean, that'd be... You don't even have to go that far back. Send him back to NXT. That's true, too. Uh, I, I'd love to see Seth Rollins versus Ricochet. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I see Tile versus North American Tile. Let's see who's the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. North America or the or the whole continents. Um, <laughs> jeez. I, man, I miss Bobby Roode. On NXT, Ooh. a whole lot. No, I'll yeah, be rude. That was, was going to be mine. I'll be rude to go back to Impact. Go back to Impact. At this point, he would thrive. You yeah. know, I mean, he would be the guy. You know, if he, you know, just bringing the glorious character with him, right? I think the only um, person who's doing better on the main roster than they were <coughs> beforehand is Drew McIntyre. Um, and that's doing, still debatable. I don't know. I think he's doing pretty well right now. He's doing good in a very low time. <laughs> so That's true. I That's mean, true. If that carries over and, into like when point. everybody returns, we'll see. And and good is a relative term on Raw because you're not going to be the main champion and you're not going to be the secondary champion. Mm-hmm. That's true. Who is the main champion right now? Exactly. Really? You <laughs> 
Yeah. Someone <laughs> didn't watch Crown Jewel. No, no. Oh, wait. I mean, everyone didn't watch Crown Jewel. Mm. Um, no, no. <laughs> False. The main champion on Raw right now is Ronda Rousey. Nope. <laughs> False. <laughs> I refuse to accept that narrative. Oh, that's right. He faced Daniel Bryan. What? Oh, yeah. yeah Lesnar. That, that, that was that the pay per view I left halfway through because I was tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Which happened. is a good. Which is a good. Fair. Yes. Fair. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. That's uh, fair to flip. What do you mean? What do you think, Larry? Who would you like to see uh, go back to their their roots? I have to think about it. Give me some time. You want? To think? Um, okay. I have one. Um. It, it pains me to say it, Nakamura. Yes. Uh, just and it, p- and pick one was, NXT or New Japan, like it, you either or, right? Either either or. Yeah. Either or. Um, it was a good experiment while it lasted. Uh, you don't like blue suit Nakamura? No, I lo- no his 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 fashion <laughs> sense has never wavered. No, no, absolutely. His fashion sense has never wavered, but it's just. It he, he's not going to get the push he deserves on the main show, while a certain person is at the top. It's just not going to happen. Daniel Bryan? Um, no. <laughs> I don't at the at the top. He's talking about Road Dog Sword. Oh, he's talking about Road Dog. Oh. Not necessarily, but okay. Man, when's Road Dog ever going to get a shot? Right. Um. <laughs> hey, he still has the Edge and Christian. Yeah, he's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I feel like Elias is in a better spot. Yeah, more mm-hmm. or less. Yeah, it's kind of. I think I think he's in the rare form that he's in a bigger, better spot and and thriving for the most Good. part. There. Yeah, some kinda. some are you know acts are just more suited for NXT versus the main roster. I mean, Elias definitely is in a more prominent spot on the main roster. He's than more he of a character that they can, they can do character with. Yeah. He's doing better with nothing on the main roster than most people on the mm-hmm. main roster. <laughs> he is. No, I mean, because seriously, is. seriously, he hasn't done, he hasn't had any significant feuds. He hasn't had any significant title runs, but he's still doing well. He's still great being him. He yeah. hasn't had any significant matches. Yeah, it's true. Like, yeah, like true. Yeah. I'm not even saying feuds or titles or anything. Matches. I mean, the last. Like, can you name me one Elias match? The the last significant match I saw him have. I don't even think it was a match. Is when he uh, took his guitar over. Um, oh, who did he hit with that guitar and just like blistered him up from top to bottom? Uh, Lashley. <sighs> Balor. No. Um, was it Apollo Cruz? I'm no, it was Jason was Jordan. Balor. Jason Jordan. Jason Jordan. Oh, oh. yeah, and that oh, wasn't even a good Jason match. Jordan. Like when match, Jason but Jordan, that was like the last memorable thing. When I Jason Jordan was throwing vegetables at him. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Remember that, that was Elias' SummerSlam moment. Oh yeah. Because because he doesn't get matches at big pay per views. He nope. gets moments. He doesn't need or to. He, or he gets a no. He does need to. You know what I remember? I remember Elias and Braun Strowman, but Braun with the giant, like cello. Yeah, the Symphony of Destruction. That was on Raw. <laughs> yeah, but that's a moment. That's something you remember. No, that was a match. Was it a match? Yeah. Oh, that did become a match. <laughs> yeah, and he, like, See, killed, he, he like, remember it properly. He threw a piano he, he killed, on him. Elias is not, he doesn't have matches. <laughs> yeah, he, he killed him on a piano. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he dropped the piano on him. All right, anyways, well, that, that's, I, still, I still think that's better than what was happening in NXT with him. Um, I don't we, know. He was barely in NXT. He was barely in an NXT. They kind of they kind of bumped him up. Um, what do you think, Matt Hardy? Matt Hardy? He needs to go back to Impact. I mean, he's fine right now doing what he's doing. Okay, um, wrestling. I get that he wants to retire well, and stuff. Um, but Matt Hardy is potentially done wrestling. For no, him. I know, but I'm just saying, Woken Matt Hardy was better in Impact than it was in WWE. Okay. I don't know. I Matt is saying he wants to be the GM of Raw. God. Yes and please. <laughs> <laughs> yes and please. Yeah. Yeah. I want I want Matt to be the GM of Raw, but from the Hardy compound, mm-hmm. and he sends Vanguard one in to make matches. I like it. <laughs> and then we I can like rekindle the feud between Vanguard one and Drake Maverick. I have a better idea. Have him okay. leave WWE, <laughs> lower his rates. And become the new promoter for Lucha Underground's reboot. 
I want to subscribe to your newsletter, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what do you got? Uh, t- uh, the, the ones that stick out are the ones that are already mentioned. Obviously, Bobby Roode. Mm-hmm. You, you feel like, you know, I mean, they, obviously they needed to find something for <laughs> Chad Gable to do. But, you know, I feel like Bobby Roode can be doing something more. Now, he is older, you know, so I don't know if that, that has anything, you know, stopping it. But um, same thing with Nakamura, you know. And the biggest one that's actually coming to mind right now is absolutely, without a doubt, Hideo Itami. Oh, jeez. Kenta. Oh, that's good. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, is he still on 205? Yeah. Is he still popping up? I haven't watched Barely 205, 205. Barely, wow. yeah. But that's he, a guy that is just like, man, you know, and it's and not saying 205 Live is, you know, less than SmackDown Raw, whatever, but it's just hard to judge what the barometer is on where you end up because there are guys, you know, I mean, obviously Daniel Bryan came around a lot sooner WWE wise than Hideo, but it's like Austin Aries was on that level of one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. And mm-hmm. he ended up in 205 Live. You know, is it just because there's nothing for him on the main roster, because he's smaller? Because in this case, you could put Finn Balor on 205 Live. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's that he's that size. So I yeah. just don't know what is it's it the, character the, or well, what? Instead of having it, people twice the size beat him up every week. Mm-hmm. Hideo got really unlucky. Yeah, oh, yeah, because, he's, yeah, a lot of injuries. Yeah. Well, but, um, not, not even just injuries, but like when he came back from injuries, Nakamura was right there. Yeah. Who yeah. was arguably yeah. a better Hideo Itami. Like, yeah. No, because for that a presentation, a like, absolutely. Yeah, like because because I mean they have similar styles, they have similar gimmicks, but Nakamura was just so over the top, mm-hmm. and Finn Balor was there at the same time, so it was just like there was no room at the end. Like yeah, it was yeah, the same thing. Sense. Like when Bull Dempsey started to catch fire, they signed Kevin Owens. Yeah, who is like the the mega evolution of Bull Dempsey. Yeah. Hey, did you just Pokemon term that? You did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, uh, that's mm-hmm. Kevin Owens is a Pokemon. Yeah. It's it's if you give it's if you gave Bull Dempsey a Maple Stone. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> ah, I broke Larry. Oh my god. Um, I'm well, picturing I'm picturing you just like throwing a brick of amber at him. <laughs> Well, like just throw a brick at Bull Dempsey. Evolve, damn you! <laughs> <laughs> like, no, this is NXT. Evolve, <laughs> Mike. I really hope uh, Bull, Bull Dempsey, J- Bull James comes back for the next Lucha show here across the street. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just oh. just give him a jar of maple syrup and see what happens. That's all I'm saying. You might hear <laughs> just Kevin Owens appears. <laughs> um. You've, you've caught a wild bull Dempsey. Um, anyways. <laughs> hey, since he already has nothing else to do, um, can't wait for Rhino to come back to IWC. <laughs> <laughs> since he got fired, uh, oh, fired I, this week. I thought he was just going to run for Comptroller in Knox City. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. Um, yes. FCW Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Just Tina. Just Husky Harris. Just uh, yeah. There you go. No, Bray Bray Wyatt was Bray Wyatt in FCW. Man, did you guys see Bray Wyatt? Um, um, uh, oh, what is the pregnancy helper? Oh, the midwife. The midwife. Bray Wyatt mid- yeah. midwife service from uh, Edge and Cushion. Man, there are shades. You see a little bit of Husky Harris in him in his presentation there, don't you? The only thing that would have been better is if we saw someone give birth to a little Bo Dallas. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, God. I thought we were going to. You know what it is? It's just one of those, like, baby dolls with a hole cut out, like, behind it. So his actual head's on the baby doll's body. (laughs) So they're, like, dancing the legs. And it's just uh, Bo Dallas just like. And he just said, holy. Yeah. Well, now that that vengeance in my head, uh, yep. also from the chat room. Good luck sleeping tonight. Uh, uh, Tina wants, can we get Samoa Joe that dominated ROH for 21 months? Um, somebody shared a somebody that does another Ring of Honor um, um, like like history podcast shared a gif or video on Twitter of like, hey, remember when Samoa Joe could overshoot people? 
in his dives. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kevin Owens NXT from Alex. I think that's one that Michael would agree with. Also, with Raw, American Alpha back to NXT. Brock Lesnar can go back to the UFC. Yeah. So Brock Kane Lesnar Velasquez can knock him out again. <laughs> Hell, Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey at UFC. Yeah, well, like, hey, Brock <laughs> Lesnar, go back to NCAA. No, put him in the XFL. <laughs> what, Brock Lesnar? Yeah. Hey, yeah, you did give a want, shot with the Vikings. To try, he would Minnesota's try not getting the team, though. No, but so? I mean, St. Louis he, is close, he, right? He doesn't like to travel, Larry. Seattle is, and that's closer to Saskatchewan than Listen, Minnesota he, is. He'll only, throw, he'll only show up to two Don't games a year. Don't subject Tina say, yeah, to just... more Brock Lesnar. She's trying to get rid of him. That's <laughs> true. Anyways, uh, let us know your answer to the question. Thank you, Tina Keys, for submitting that. You guys can submit something oh, and stir oh, the pot here what, on the on the hotline or in the more, email sword? as well. Yes. Sorry, one more. Hmm. Bailey. Yeah, Sasha Banks. Go back, just go back to NXT. Izzy will welcome you with open arms. Bailey versus Lacey Evans would be a fun match. Bailey versus Bianca Belair would be great. Oh, like just Bailey versus Evil Candice LeRae. Yes, and please, like just just all of it. Just just Bailey versus the world in NXT. <laughs> Did you have one? I was gonna say if you're bringing up Bailey, you got you got to go with Asuka too on SmackDown. You know, it's same same deal though. You know the, the promos and everything, I, but I don't know. This week's SmackDown may be oh, on yeah. the verge of reality. Oscar, oh, I'm, so oh, yeah, I'm behind. Oscar's in a cool <laughs> off, but her run up to WrestleMania I thought was great. Yeah, absolutely, like, it was amazing. It, it was a continuation of NXT, mm-hmm. but again, there's so many girls, so everybody's got to cycle through, right? Except for Charlotte um, and Ronda and, and Ronda. So I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, let us know what any, any more you guys want. Uh, uh, hashtag WMS big question on the Twitter uh, if you want to get your answers over there. Hey guys, uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling are uh, helping out um, some pro wrestling friends. Uh, recently at Joey Janela's LA Confidential, they saw some insane wrestling action, but not without some casualties. I think that we should not say it that way. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> there were there, uh, uh, Wham Fam uh, brother Marco Stunt was injured in a match and has had surgery to repair a broken leg. He looks like he's going to make a full recovery, but seeing as uh, we both share the love, they both share the love of Nickelodeon crossovers, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to help. So 100% of all proceeds from their merch at whatamaneuver.net and occupy or shop at occupyprowrestling.com will go to their buddy Marco uh, from now through the end of January. So go do that. Support an indie wrestler that needs a hand right now, or I guess he needs a leg, um, <laughs> over there at OccupyProWrestling.com. And thank you to them for supporting the show and get the word out. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Hey, man. I, I guess he needs a leg. I <laughs> Have you found Zach Gowan yet? <laughs> hey. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't have an answer for that one. Okay. Well, we're... <laughs> Nick, we're going to talk to you this segment. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's your lead in. You're welcome. Uh... <laughs> um, but no, I wanted to talk about it. this weekend. There was a pretty cool um, event. Uh, Rise Wrestling. Rise with a Y. Not the one with all the women. This is the one with the intergender wrestling, actually. Um, That's how I just distinct them apart. But uh, they had their second year anniversary show, and one of the the big matches that was going down there was Super Hentai and Brandon K, uh, a match that apparently hasn't happened for 20 years uh, initially. Um, and Nick here was actually the special guest ring announcer for for that match, and you told a pretty awesome story about kind of your early um, yeah look into indie wrestling, I guess, some 20 years ago. Uh, meeting Brandon K. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because I thought it was a really cool uh, experience that I wanted to share with the Mayhemers here on this show since you're coming on here. Well, yeah, absolutely. I uh, My first indie show I ever went to, I was um, I was eight years old. It was January 1999. And um, my best friend growing up, his sister was a waitress at a restaurant and she came home with this flyer because we were big wrestling fans and came home with this flyer um, that they were going to have a wrestling show at her restaurant. You know, was, that might not sound weird to some indie wrestling fans, but uh, as a WWE fan, I'm thinking, what do you mean they're going to have a show at the restaurant? You know, I didn't get we're that. We're talking I, 1998, 19, right? I had no, yeah. I, I was a, you know, I didn't know there was indie wrestling. I thought it was 
WWF, WCW, and that was wrestling, you know? Mm -hmm. So we get there, and they had moved everything in the bar area. They had moved the pool tables and chairs, and they had a ring there. And a couple rows of chairs, whatever. Well, now, I didn't care about the production or anything because I had been to a couple shows with my dad, WWE shows, and um, it was always way up top, you know, um, peanut heaven. <laughs> and you get to an indie show, and we were right there. We were in the front row, and you, we could see the ring, and this is the closest I had ever been to a ring, you know. And at intermission, um, we see this guy, and he's walking around, and he's in long blonde hair, tanned, all jacked up. And we thought that he was Test from WWE. <laughs> Test had just made his debut. He was in the corporation and, at the time. And if you've met Brandon, Brandon is definitely not as tall as Test. I mean, I'm eight. I, Everyone was tall. You know? yeah, everyone was that's tall. True. I guess from that perspective, it's so, like, um, oh, you're, you're taller than me. So we're thinking, you, you must know, be like, Test. We, we saw the first half of the show, and we obviously didn't know anybody. And we saw this guy, and we thought that was that's Tess. That's mm. Tess. So we went up to him, and of course, when he turns around, we realize, oh, that's not a Tess. <laughs> but um, anyway, he couldn't have been cooler. He brought us in the ring at intermission and um, took pictures with us, taught us how to run the ropes, uh, put us on the turnbuckles, took all kinds of pictures, and that, like I said, that was 1999, and um, I hadn't been to an indie show since. You know that yeah, I was always a wrestling fan, was always into wrestling, but uh, for the longest time, that was one of the greatest memories of my life because I had never been in an actual wrestling ring other than at that point. So um, time went on and uh, I never really knew what happened to Brandon or where he ended up. All I knew was that his name was Brandon. I, you know, cause I remember Brandon, Brandon, all the girls yelling Brandon. Um, but it was last year and now keep in mind, like I'm in the business, I've rubbed shoulders with Brandon, like I've you know met Brandon, and it never clicked. And I always thought to myself, because obviously I have the pictures, it was one of the biggest moments of my life. And I, I always thought, whatever I think happened, you said to that, it was you know, on your nightstand. It was for on my a nightstand while. for a while, like you know, because I was in a wrestling ring, you know. Mm. And uh, up until I had my little visit at the performance center in 2015, that was the only time I'd ever stepped foot in a wrestling ring. Mm. So that was like the moment. And, and that's the story. If you go check out the Indie Mayhem show we did with Nick um, um, sometime last year in the archives, uh, we talk about that experience you had yeah. there. So, um, yeah, so anyway, um, so I go and I, I look on Facebook and it was one of those throwback Thursday posts or something. And there's all these over and over and over again, these people are sharing this picture. And it was Brandon and a couple other, PW, I think Bubba couple PWX guys in security outfits and they were working as extras for raw probably when they were in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I said, Oh man, that's, that's Brandon. That's the guy that, you know, so, and now, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but, uh, I messaged Dombrowski and I was like, I sent him the picture and I said, who is this? I said, because it's all over the, you know, well then before Dombrowski could even respond, I see it shared over and over and over on Brandon's page. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it clicked right then that, oh my God, that was Brandon. So right away I told, um, Sean Phoenix and Marcus Mann and guys that I know, know Brandon, because I had only met him one time, mm -hmm. um, rubbed elbows with him a couple of times, but I never talked to him actually, you know, introduced myself, whatever the deal was. So it was funny. Cause I, <laughs> when I realized it was him, I messaged, uh, Marcus, I messaged Sean Phoenix. And I said, I need to get a hold of Brandon K right away. I said, uh, you know, give me his number. I need to talk to him. And they were like, well, I can give him you know, a message. And I said, no, I want to talk to him to his face. And uh, it was funny. Marcus goes, listen, Lendo, I love you, buddy, but you don't want to go start anything with Brandon K. Like, he thought that I was like, no, I'm going to say something to his face. Like, I don't want to talk, you know. And I was like, no, 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 not that at all. And I explained to him, you know, what happened. Well, I guess Brandon got, you know, wind of the story somehow and, got a hold of me. So for months they were trying to get me to rise to announce a match for Brandon mm -hmm. to, you know, kind of have it come full circle. And every time that they came to me, I was either booked with IWC or ring of honor or, you know, premiere in Cleveland somewhere else. I was always booked. So it never worked out. Well here, I guess Brandon's kind of maybe on a little bit of a farewell tour here uh, next year or so. So they, you know, he wanted it to get done before then in this um, hentai match was, perfect opportunity so 
told him I'd come in and do the, and I got to meet Hank Hudson for the first time. I never met, I never met Hank until, until this past weekend. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. It was a pretty cool story. Um, um, leading into that match and, and I think he had some history with hentai. Of course, hentai at IWC probably wouldn't. You yeah, first, actually, right? um, it was pretty cool. Like I say, Brandon is probably the reason that I'm in the business and hentai is probably the reason that I'm still in the business because I, w I wanted to be a wrestler. Everybody did when they were eight. You know, you see the champions. All my friends wanted to be wrestlers. But um, seeing Brandon and interacting with Brandon really made me fall in love with it. And I really said that I want to do this somehow, like be in front of a crowd, do whatever. Because I had been used to performing. My dad's a, a musician. He's been in oldies bands my whole life. So I've been on stage and I've sang in front of people and performed in front of people. But in a wrestling ring is, is a total different setting. So um, Brandon helped me really decide like, okay, this is what I want to do. And when I started with IWC, um, the first show we worked was in Rural Valley. So I don't want to give too much away, but there isn't really much of a locker room in uh, it's a, <laughs> Rural yeah. Valley. There's it's more a of like a black curtain. Uh, it? a yeah, it's a, that's the one you were at, yeah. yeah. Black curtain and a hallway, and you kind of just get dressed where you uh, where you can. So yeah. no issues there. But the first show that I worked at Court Time, which is the IWC you know home base, if you want to call it there, um, a couple of the old school veterans didn't really think that I should be in the locker room. For whatever reason, you know, why is this announcer in the locker room changing with us, you know? So I, they didn't say anything to me. You know, they didn't come up to me, you know, hey, get out of our locker room. But I heard them. And it kind of it kind of crushed me a little bit, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm finally here, you know. And these guys aren't guys that I necessarily knew, but these are the guys that were respected. And these are the guys that I was trying to, you know, get in with almost, you know. And they're telling me this kid shouldn't be in the locker room. Who is he anyway? And... I got my stuff, went out of the locker room. I certainly didn't want to cause any problems. I was brand new. And um, it was Hentai that pulled me aside and said, listen, he said, you're a part of this company. You get dressed in the locker room. And he took me in the locker room. And uh, I don't want to say I would have quit if that didn't happen, but that was definitely like a crushing experience for these guys to not think I belonged or whatever the deal is. And then um, I don't want to say because of hentai, I've never had a problem ever, you know, <laughs> but you know, since then everything was cool and uh, yeah, fit in well. And I can say now that some of the guys that didn't want me there, I'm actually pretty close to, I don't want to say their names, but um, you know, it worked out. So hentai was always cool to me and uh, it was cool to work with him again. Uh, really, really two great, great guys. That's awesome. And of course, you know, you can check out uh, how that came out at, on, on Rise Wrestling. Uh, we got the pre-order up this week. Actually, a little clip of that is up on the uh, VOD page right now, so you can cool. get a little preview of it. Um, and, uh, and it was cool to see you uh, uh, at, at that promotion and, and uh, get that story too. So, but you guys, so you're, so we're talking about beforehand. I forget if we were on the show. Um, you, you deal with some interesting stuff up at Premier Wrestling in Cleveland. Oh, my God. <laughs> There is there's some stuff we were we were kind of joking about uh, J Rock being a future of honor guy, um, but he also so he has his own personal ring announcer. Yeah, and and things have escalated, and it sounds like you're going to be in a wrestling match next month. Yeah, or, um, no, in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks, yeah, December sixteenth. That kind of fell together. Um, I've been the premier ring announcer since the relaunch in the summer of 2016. Um, Joe Dombrowski came to me and said that he had this idea for uh, this new company he wanted to start up. He wanted me to be the ring announcer. I was just working IWC at the time. That was the only company I was working for. So I was announcing like once a month. So obviously I jumped right into it. And after a while, Premier uh, became one of the most fun places to work. You know, the, the crowd's always into it. Um, it's always a great show. And then out of nowhere, it was actually the first anniversary of the relaunch. Um, Dave Kitch comes out, who uh, he's another ring announcer. It's, I don't want to say anything good, bad. I just I really don't even want to bring him up, but you brought it up, so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's, he's J-Rock's personal ring announcer. So, uh, of course, he has J-Rock backing him up. So... He can say anything he wants. He can do anything he wants. And no one's going to step to him because J-Rock's there. You know, it got to the point where, you know, I could let it go. He wants to come out and he wants to introduce J-Rock. That's fine. That's a, that's a match off for me. You know, <laughs> do you want to announce J-Rock? That's fine. But it got to the point where 
these little insults and these little, uh, you know, comments. You know, he called me the B ring announcer. Um, he says that, you know, I'll never be what he is. I'll never have his fashion sense. I'll never be as jacked up as he is. And that's all. That's fine. I can I can take an insult. He does call himself the most jacked ring yes, announcer. The world's most jacked yeah. up ring announcer. Yep. So um, he clearly has not seen the guns on Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Dave Kitch and Jojo <laughs> in an arm wrestling contest. I don't know. Uh, after you guys sell your differences, I think that's the next thing we got to set up. Well, yeah, so anyway, they pushed it a little too far. You know, I can I can take insults or whatever, but they talked about my wife. They talked about my kids. And uh, there comes a point in time where you have to you have to be a man. You have to stand up for yourself. You know, all these times uh, for months, I sat there and, and let it go because, you know, I like my job. I like what I'm doing. Um, and to be quite honest with you, J-Rock could pick me up and throw me through that window across the street. You know, I'm not going to pick a fight with J-Rock. Um, but they kept calling me out and they, they actually threw me in the ring. I, I tried backing down. J-Rock's in my face and uh, I lost my coal and I, I hit him. I hit J-Rock and uh, <laughs> didn't work out for me. He got up right away, obviously, and um, embarrassed me. He gave me a pretty big beating until... Luckily, Andrew Pallas, who's one of my good friends, uh, was there watching on the monitor, came out, stopped it before anything serious happened. Um, but I wasn't thinking, you know, it was that point where they did push me over the edge, you know, and I'm a little embarrassed at what happened, but Joe Dombrowski did the right thing. He came out the next month and uh, basically he threatened my job and told me, you know, when I signed you to premiere, you were here to be the ring announcer, you're not to put your hands on anybody. And he told me this when I was first breaking in, you know. Because Joe helped me a lot when I first broke in. There's going to be egos. There's going to be people that push your buttons. Don't let it get to you. And and I did. And um, he, he did what he had to do. He told me that, you know, this is a last chance. You know, if it happens again, I am fired. So from there, you know, Dave Kitch is watching on the monitor, and he's always sitting there because he knows I can't do anything to him. You know, and I don't like Dave Kitch. He comes out. He wants to talk about me. You know, everybody knows J-Rock's a jerk. J-Rock's been a jerk for 20 years. Everybody knows that I'm not giving anything away here. But Dave Kitch is right up there with him. He interferes in, in J-Rock's matches. He's, uh, you know, stuck his nose where it doesn't belong on more than one occasion. And it, 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 it needs to stop. It, he's laid his hands on me. And luckily, there's a guy there that can stand in, in, in next to me and fight, and that's Andrew Palace. I, I may have gotten myself into something that I, I can't get out of because at first it was, uh, you know, I got my shot in on J-Rock, so I'm okay. Well, now it got to the point where I want to beat Dave Kitch's ass because my girls watch Premiere. You know, my girls watch what I do, and... They watch my when I'm on Ring of Honor. They watch whatever you know the IWC DVDs, what have you. And my little girls watched J Rock and Dave Kitch bully me. You know how, how embarrassing is that? You know, and you try to keep your cool, but you know what's going to happen if some guy comes up to you, Sorg, and, and, and picks on you, and your wife's standing there. You, you know, you have to stand up for yourself. So unless it's uh, Shane Taylor, I didn't stand up to Shane Taylor. You know, I'd be running, and my my wife would appreciate that. Yes. But <laughs> um, you know, it, it's gotten to the point of. You know, I'm not excited to be in the ring and get my first match and have all the fans there cheering my name. It's not even to the point where I want to kick Dave Kitch's ass. It's more than that. I want to win, and we are going to win. December 16th, we are going to win. I'm going to shut up Dave Kitch and continue on my way as the premier announcer and hopefully get them the hell out of there because I'm getting damn sick of it. How much has new icon, new, new hardcore icon uh, uh, Justin Plummer inspired you? In preparation for this. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm not going to come out in a SWAT vest or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and a mouth guard. And, but yeah. it is gonna, it is going to be a fight, Sorg. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give anything away. I'm, I'm bumping around a little bit with Palace. I'm learning some things. But my plan is, you know, you're watching this right now, Kitch. My plan is get you in the ring, and I'm going to beat your ass. That's it. No, no wrist locks, no hammer locks, no body slams. I'm going to beat your ass. Palace can teach me whatever he wants, but we're going to win. We're going to kick your ass, and that's the end of it. I'm so, I feel like I swore too much on this. i got to stop. That's okay. We were explicit. Get, <laughs> getting into it. But Although yeah. it is a family-friendly show. Yeah, December 16th. It, it, December 16th will be a family-friendly show, despite everything going on there. Yeah. Check out Premier Championship Wrestling up there in Turner's Hall, uh, December 16th in Cleveland. Um, it, it's a great show happening there, and this is going to be a – looks like a, a very interesting event that's going to go down there for uh, 
uh, what do they call it? Holiday havoc. Yeah, this and month. I, it, it's a thing like Merry I, Christmas. And first where do match. You, and where do you where do you go from there? Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, after this match, you know, where do we go? Am I just back to being the ring announcer, or is if we win or lose, is Dave Kitch going to come out and run his mouth? Then you know that's something that I haven't even talked with Dombrowski about because I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I, I'm mm-hmm. not. I don't want anything to come in the way of this match. You know, I just counting down the day, Sorg. We're getting ready. It's been a long time in the making, and we're going to win. Looking forward to see how that's going to turn out. And, of course, that Premier Championship Wrestling, Rise Wrestling, with a Y, as well as so much more um, that uh, Nick is involved with with IWC and other groups, uh, including, let's say, Cleveland, Pittsburgh area, Fight Society, now new, the VOD on IndieWrestling.us. Um, as of this week, Angel Gate Wrestling, some women's wrestling here in Pittsburgh. A lot of really interesting. Brian Pillman Jr., a part of Fight Society this week, is a, a part of uh, episode 17. That's uh, uh, on VOD uh, as of this week. And coming soon, some eerie wrestling is on Ooh. its way. I'll drop that hot news here first for you guys. Look for information there. It looks like I went into the Great White North. <laughs> uh, here at the end of the month and we're going to be doing something with that uh, so go check out all that stuff on VOD a lot of great stuff and rentals as well you don't have to spend a, you don't have to break the bank checking out what's going on in Premier Championship Wrestling or Sample Renegade Wrestling Alliance and their insane crowd going on there I have like PTSD from RWA now after the last show I feel it's just like it's it, I wasn't even out there um, but uh, go check all that stuff out at IndieWrestling.us. Hey, it's the time of the show, guys, where we find out what did you learn from pro wrestling this week? Oof. Who wants to go first? Anyway. I learned from Samoa Joe you should always drink with moderation. Oh, yeah? Yes. That's what I learned this I week. I can't wait to watch that. Wait, <laughs> drink with moderation or in moderation? In, Who's in moderation? Moderation is the yeah, name exactly. of the bar. Yeah, exactly. Who is moderation? I guess. Drink it in moderation. Uh, no, I don't know. Probably with moderation. He's, yeah, you know, right. between that and um, cookie sales tactics, we're learning a lot from Samoa Joe this week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what about you, Mike? What did you learn? Oh, boy. Um, I learned that Dean Ambrose wasn't born with the shield. He was molded by it. Shaped by it. <laughs> <laughs> Strengthened by it. Oh, thank you. I really, also, I really also, hope he breaks also, he breaks it, Seth Rollins back and then he has to come no, back. No, he, he breaks Seth Rollins back. Okay. Uh-huh. Seth Rollins takes off until WrestleMania. Yeah. And Seth Rollins ends the match with a V trigger, but he goes, Where's the trigger? <laughs> Right before he does it. Wow. Nick, what'd you learn? I've learned that uh, timing is everything and time changes everything. Because the last time I was on this show in March of 17. Basement. Mm -hmm. What I learned on that episode (laughs) was that. I don't remember what I exactly said, but it was right around the time that Rockstar Spud was the ring announcer for Impact. And from that point which is probably the lowest point he had in Impact. Until yeah. now, he's on Monday Night Raw every week. It's crazy to think that. So just think, in a year and a half, you could be pissing yourself while managing the Street Profits. I could. <laughs> I could. Poop if they want me to. Speaking of people, you just reminded me of the... No, not poop if they want me to. You just reminded me of the person who I wish was back doing what they were previously doing. Uh-huh. Leo Rush. Leo Rush needs to leave WWE <laughs> Leo and Rush. go wrestle. He needs to go wrestle. <laughs> he just he go wrestles. Back to 205 Does he? Live or... Just because someone needs... cancels their network subscription doesn't mean their wrestling doesn't exist. Oh, I'm sorry. All I see is Raw now. So I just see well, him talking about, talking about Bobby Lashley's butt. That's yeah. your own that's damn fault for pose. only watching Raw. That's, it's Renee's favorite pose. Um. Like, literally, there are a gazillion WWE shows out there and you have picked the worst one to watch. I'm going to have to pay for it. You don't have to pay for SmackDown either. I know. I'm watching that one too. Okay. It just Raw, <laughs> it just raw is more prominent because it's so... Instead of watching Raw, watch three episodes of Lucha. I've told you this before. Oh, you will mm, feel better about mm, your life. Mm. 
How's that New Japan watching going? I'm waiting. We're in the middle of the tag league right now, and mm. I like to save that for right before Wrestle Kingdom. You know, eleven, 11, oh, 11 uh, p.m. Eleven p.m. We'll watch on the, Wrestle we'll watch Kingdom the finals. Eve. While we're eating some ramen and saying, oh, we'll just stay up until tomorrow. We'll, we'll yeah, watch, this yep. is going to completely work. And then Doc Remini passes out on the couch yep. as the commuters are going as by the on the train. As the first tea goes by in yeah. the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and That's I pass our... out somewhere before the three main events. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm trying to watch on my computer while chatting with you guys at the same time. And I'm just like, mm, nope, we're done. We're yeah. done here. Yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out new methods. Yeah, if they it had something better. Although, although the ramen noodles was a really good idea. Well, I didn't have yep. ramen noodles. Sorg, I was I was here. Well, I can't imagine there's good ramen in Poughkeepsie. <laughs> I mean, there's not, well, not good ramen. I got to be honest. I wouldn't have expected good ramen in Pittsburgh either. But well, we got, to, we well, we got, got some it. trendy neighborhoods so, here that are down yeah. with the ramen. So, yeah. I mean, it seems seems like the, the, the thing to do. Yeah, if, if, if New Japan had something better than World Tag Lead, League leading up to Wrestle Kingdom, I'd probably be tuning in right now. But mm-hmm. just watch Lucha. Oh my God! You know what? you should just watch German wrestling. Just just pick a different nationality. German. I hear good things. I'm waiting. I'm Some waiting. guy named Walter. I'm wait. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for NXT Frankfurt. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for um, it. No, actually, yeah, I know it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, but it, by, I know. by the end of 2019, you're gonna see Takeover Deutschland. You're gonna, yeah, I you're know. gonna see NXT <laughs> take. That's not a joke. It's I gonna know. be NXT uh, take the wall down. Um, <laughs> Mister <laughs> Wunderkid, tear down this wall. Oh, I, I wish. Hey, Alan. Uh, what's his name? Alex. Uh, Alex Wright Alex is the GM of um, NXT <laughs> Germany. Is. Please. Or- Sorg? Yes. You may get your wish. Oh man. Yes. Yes. That's what I learned. I learned that I love the amazing phrases that I can say because of pro wrestling. Like a caveman beat down a video game character with a Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. Is that in Wreck It Ralph? That is Lucha. a life statement. <laughs> Lucha say? Underground is the best for statements. L- like- Lucha's good for that. Like a time traveling <laughs> Lucha tour. Dot, a dot, dot, tra- anything that comes tra- next. <laughs> a time-traveling luchador stole essence from a mysterious ghost lady to give it to his friend who now turned evil. Right, right. But, but also, this, th- that is still something you can say on a television show. So it distances you, right? Versus, mm-hmm. versus this is something I saw in person, <laughs> right? Happened. Like, I mean, I, that should be a big question. What is the weirdest statement you can say from pro wrestling next week? You think about this for next week. We'll, we'll, we'll circle around to it. Like, what is Ooh, the? I actually, I almost like that better than what did you learn. <laughs> I don't know if you could do it on a weekly basis, but Ooh, um, I bet we could. <laughs> I bet we fucking could. We'll see. We'll see about that. Nick oh. Lendl, where can people find you online? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Nick Lendl, and on Instagram, I am at announcer Nick Lendl. My name was taken. Believe what? That. Really? Yeah, I was really late into the uh, Twitter game. Like I was always on or um, Instagram. I always had just Facebook and Twitter. I never had an Instagram, and uh, I got pushed into it this summer. And I went to do it, and my Twitter is just at Nick Lendl. So I went to do at Nick Lendl. Now, ne- now you can never not be an announcer. I was gonna say yeah. So like, what, <laughs> you're kind uh, of pigeonholed into this. Yeah. yeah. So announcer Nick Lendl. It's me on Instagram. But yeah, so, can you believe I mean, it's that's a problem. That's going to be a problem when you start pooping your pants for the street profits. Hey, if they pay, if they pay enough. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, they they know your face down there. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, maybe somebody from WWE is listening to this podcast. Who right. knows? You know what? He kissed, we know Road Dog listens. We know Road Dog. Does. He'd probably be really good at pooping. <laughs> that is true. We already have a bar for you. <laughs> and who knows what we comes. Don't, we don't set the bar. We have yeah. the bar. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And we don't set the bar. We're up the street from a bar. Um, uh, Larry is at uh, the Dark, basement. Yes. The, no, uh, darkforgestudios.co Thank for you. any prop fabrication, set design, or uh, yeah, anything like that. Yeah, we were talking about uh, if you could build caskets, if you need a casket. Match. Yeah. So I we were, mean, we were looking at some other caskets or that. Uh, did you know you can get a used casket online? Yeah, we you, found can, get, out you today. can get used caskets online. Yeah, oh, yeah. Only used ones. Just used ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used ones. 
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's not. I, I didn't come up with that. If you Google I used caskets, used, that's what comes up that on eBay. Rate. What if you want a new fresh casket that you need something special happen for your wrestling match? Hit up Dark Forge for all your needs. I don't make caskets just so you know. No, wait. But, but you could. I, I can. But fi- can. I, I can. You, I can. I can. If you did modify make it. caskets, if you did make caskets, could you film? Creepy videos like in 1994 when the Undertaker made Yokozuna's casket. Probably. Next okay. Time, next time he's we made, need to, we need to find a, find a um. Yeah, we can probably do that. Next time you make you some, can do anything with enough D, money, Mike. Double wide <laughs> casket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a barn somewhere we, we could shoot I, this. I in. still don't understand why we had the Yokozuna casket for like the thinnest guy in professional wrestling, Matt <laughs> Connor, this weekend. <laughs> That was a big one. Yeah. That was a big one. A it's big so one. you can have a handicap casket match. You gotta get them both in there. Mm. For the tag team casket match. The tag team casket. There you match. go. There We're set is. for it. We're tag set for it. There, I think there we just you know, next month at Rise. <laughs> tag team casket. There, there match. was a handicap casket match on SmackDown once. They did that on. Um, there was a three way one. Where and, did uh, Rusev face uh, Undertaker? In um, um well, in, was that where it in, was? Parts unknown. In, parts in, unknown. In, in the bad place. In the bad yeah, place. Sense yeah. deep over. They fit. They fit two people in that casket. Yeah, but uh, Triple H actually had a, ca- a handicap match, handicap casket match on SmackDown against Midian and Viscera. Oh my God! Jeez, oh, Midian and Viscera. Wow. <laughs> he, he lost that one. He lost that one. <laughs> he lost that one. I think we all lost that one. <laughs> well, no, no, he did hit pedigrees on both of them. Yes. Do not get that twisted. But then he realized, oh no, they both can't fit in here. Yep. So it was a logistics problem. Yeah. Oh, geez. Geez. forfeit. All right. Oh, uh, guys, thank you so much, uh, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Yeah, I talk about wrestling things and stuff and things and stuff and ooh yeah. Check out uh, this week. We will have an Indie Mayhem show release on Thursday uh, with Bronco McBride. It's the other story of the John Roden story. Uh, so uh, I'll lead into and also check out John Roden and Bronco McBride's um, 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 tag team therapy videos on their Facebook pages. Is the way to put it. Um, they're they've kind of it was it's kind of that 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 Cesaro um um what's it Seamus thing where they were feuding and now they're tag teams yeah, and they were that. they've been told to get together and they've been playing Uno they've been going shopping it usually ends violently um Boy, so uh, I've never played a game of Uno that didn't end violently so. I mean doc, Dr. Feelbad he supposedly is a doctor and I guess he's actually applying the doctorate now that we still have in question uh, check out that and of course Renegade Wrestling Alliance is also this Saturday to see how that goes out and also uh, Marshall Gambino uh, comes back to the Indie Mayhem show that will be next Thursday we talk with him about uh, what's going on with the Pittsburgh wrestling scene and what's coming up with Prospect Pro Wrestling that was debuting on the 15th um, up in Catanning, PA. Uh, that will be um, debuting there on the Indie Mayhem show next Thursday. So a lot of good stuff here. And the call has gone out. The scheduling has begun. It's coming back. The STD Christmas special. <laughs> the hat is on the tree awaiting the return of Bradley Claus. So with that, I send you guys out. Next week, we will have Ronnie Starks with us, and he is going to, um, let me read this right, violate the podcast. Uh, we'll see what that means. I won't that be here challenge next week. accepted. I, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see who gets violated, we've, Ronnie Starks. We've seen paints on this show before. It's going to take a lot. That is true. We do have a window now. Let's keep them out of the basement. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. Mayhem out. Wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.